here we have a dam with a reservoir acting on it from the side with uh, the dimensions as given by the problem and we'll be using a thousand kilograms per cubic meter for the density of water. In part A of the problem, we're asked to find the net horizontal force on the dam from the gauge pressure of the water. Now since pressure in all directions increases with a depth within a fluid, the pressure acting on the wall of the dam from the reservoir is not uniform. Therefore, the force acting on the wall isn't uniform either. Now we can find the total force on the wall by taking a, a horizontal a strip of area, of a differential area specifically, and uh, let's call it dA. And let's integrate this along the vertical axis of the wall. Let's say that this strip has the same width as the width of the reservoir, W, and it has a thickness of dy. I will also use the variable y to represent the depth of this strip element in the water. Uh, let's also use the variable y to represent the depth of this strip element at any given point, since the gauge pressure at any depth of water is a function of its depth. Now the force element at any depth is then, uh, let's call it df, and remember the force due to pressure is equal to that pressure multiplied by the area. So in this case it's whatever the pressure is times uh, the moving element. And the gauge pressure due to a depth is equal to the density of the fluid times g times its depth at whatever given point. And its area element is w dy. And so the force element is as follows right here. Now we integrate this along the height of the dam, along a capital D, the total depth of the water in the reservoir. We'll integrate from a depth of zero meters all the way down to the deepest point in the water where the pressure and the force will be greatest. To solve this integral, let's first move all the non-y constants outside the integral. Then to integrate y with respect to y, we just use the power rule of integration. So this just becomes one half of y squared. And here is the integral with the bounds written out. And now we have to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus in order to actually finish solving the integral. I've plugged in uh, the capital D here. And plugging in zero just makes the whole thing zero, of course. So this is our actual value. This is our actual formula for the total force acting horizontally on the dam. Now all that's left to do is to plug in our values. So the density of water for rho, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared for g, 314 meters for w, and 35 meters for d. And doing all of that, we find a value for the force of 1.88 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons. This is part of the reason why dams are usually sloped or slanted this way. As the pressure becomes greater with depth, the dam must be stronger in order to resist the greater pressure force at the lower levels. However, we also have a part B to deal with. Now we want to find the net torque due to that force about a horizontal line through this axis right here. Because torque is related to force, it seems intuitive that the torque being applied to the wall of the dam won't be uniform either, so we'll have to perform an integration again. It, it could be confusing to work with the complex shape of this dam, especially since we're not given any information about the dam's geometry. So let's simplify the dam as though it were a single rod on which the water is acting. It might seem strange that we're changing the geometry of the dam so much, but this actually won't change our answer at all. No matter what the dam looks like, the water is still only directly acting on the wall of the dam, where the water and the dam make contact. Yes, the position and angle of the moment arm changes, 
but we're still only looking at the horizontal components of that arm. This is another part of the reason why dams are often shaped this way. Since the dam's engineers can't change the torque that the water exerts on the dam, they instead increase the torque due to the gravitational force acting on the dam by putting its center of mass further away from where the axis of rotation is. This gravitational torque counters the torque due to the water, but I digress. Anyway, uh, the torque, or in this case, uh, the torque element, since we know we'll be integrating, acting on this dam, is equal to the product of the force element, df, and the lever arm, which changes with the depth. In this case, I will call it capital D minus y, since the torque will be equal to zero at the lowest depth where the axis of rotation is, and maximized when the depth is zero, or we're furthest away from the from the axis of rotation. Now we will expand this using what we know about df from part a, since we know that uh, df is equal to uh, this lovely little function right there. And now we integrate from 0 to d, once again, over the depth of the water. Here's our integral. Once again, I'll first take out all the non-y terms. And let's also distribute the y over the parentheses to make this an easier integral to evaluate. Now we can evaluate this integral using the power rule. And once again, we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to find our final equation. And we get this equation right here, which simplifies down to 1 sixth of rho g w d cubed. Now we just plug in the values given by the problem once again, and this gives us an answer of 2.20 times 10 to the 10th power of newton meters. And finally, we want the moment arm of the torque. We can find the length of the lever arm by recalling that the formula for a torque is uh, this right here, where the torque is equal to the lever arm times the force applied, where R and F are perpendicular to each other, which they are in this case. Now, we spent the previous two parts of the problem solving for the torque and the force, so now all we need to do is solve for R. And so I've isolated R by dividing both sides by F, and now we plug in our formulas for the torque and the force, like so, and this simplifies down to D over 3. This means that the effective line of action of the total force exerted by the water is at a distance of D divided by 3 above the bottom level of the dam. Now we just plug in our values, and this gets us 11.7 meters for the length of the moment arm.